Welcome back to Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk. Let's take a look at some other area racing action starting at Greenville Pickens Speedway in Greenville, South Carolina, where Marty Ward made a late race pass on Randy Porter, then held off Toby Porter to score his fourth straight victory. Toby Porter finished second, Randy Porter was third, Jeremy Burns fourth, and Will Burns fifth. Other winners on the night included Tim Lawless in Trucks, James Johnson in Chargers, Eric Hedden in Four Cylinders, Kyle Ballou in Renegades, and Mark Gibson in Street Stocks. In Friday night drags action at Atlanta Motor Speedway, David Harbin scored his second pro victory of the young season. Meanwhile, Shelton Maynard scored the win in the Truck Advance Division. Other winners included Art Petrie, David Harbin, Travis Burney, Scott Bale, Will Coots, Ryan Wilson, Jason Kennard, Daryl Halford, Bobby Bramlett, Spencer King, Dustin Oliver, Tony Freeman, James Roberts, and Jacob Turner. It was a special night at Hartwell Speedway in Hartwell, Georgia, as fans came out to pause for the cause, celebrating the lives of family members and friends affected by cancer. Among those who were on hand were Wayne Bray of Colbert, Georgia, who's fighting brain and lung cancer. Bray led a victory lap with his son Daniel and friends Chuck and Carol Finch. Also on hand was Debbie Beard, who is fighting lung cancer. She took a victory lap with her son, Frankie Beard. On the track, Bubba Russell turned into the victory lane in the limited late model feature as he beat out Parker Herring for the win. Hot Rod Lamonts finished third with Brandon Haley fourth and Brant Carey fifth. Other winners on the night included David McCoy in Fast Track Late Models, Paul Byram in Modified Street, Matthew Denton in Stock V8, Chris Wilson in Stock 4-Cylinder, Drew Collins in Young Guns, and Stephen Powell in Upfronts. For more on these and other stories, visit RaceWeekIllustrated.com. While Chase Elliott sprinted to the victory in the Super Late Model feature, there were other battles on the High Banks at Gresham Motorsports Park Saturday night as the local divisions competed in their second set of events for the 2012 season. We start with the Mini Stocks, where the race started with a daring three-wide run into turn number one. Aaron Calvert would come away with the lead in that race. The first caution of the night flew on lap two when Sean Mize spun off the second turn. Meanwhile, Vernon Hicks and Greg Swink spun off of turn four. Vernon Hicks would go for another spin off four a couple of laps later, but he was able to continue. Meanwhile, Spanky Hicks and Calvert put on a side-by-side -side show for the fans for several laps, and on lap seven, Calvert slides up high, allowing Spanky to move into the lead. On lap 14, Mize spins again, this time off turn four. At the same time, leader Spanky Hicks' car makes hard contact with the outside wall. Hicks would climb out uninjured, but his night was over and his car was used up. Calvert would move into the lead then and would hold on to that top spot for the rest of the event, with Vernon Hicks making a nice recovery for second and Avery Burgess finishing third. Next up was the combined Sportsman and Renegade feature. This was a show. Two good, two good classes, good, good two wide battles. Jackie Daniel jumps up front for the Sportsman with Jed, Jeff Chadwick in second and Brian Sosby in third. Meanwhile, Mike Childers and Jesse Thomas battle it out for the Renegade lead. Lap 16, Thomas loops his car around in the front stretch. He drives away and is able to continue. But two laps later, Thomas made hard contact with the wall between turns three and four, resulting in a scary looking fire off his black Chevrolet. Track crews are quickly to the scene and they put the fire out, and Thomas fortunately is okay. Jackie Daniel would go on to hold off Chadwick and Sosby for the sportsman win, while Childers picked up the Renegade win. In trucks, it was Conrad Compton who moved out front early and held the top spot for the opening 10 laps until Taylor Dorner brought out that first caution. On the restart, Cody Haskins charged to the top spot and moved out to a healthy lead. Compton, though, began to fall back, and his truck broke loose off of turn two to bring out the second caution of the night on lap number 12. On the restart, Haskins moved back out front with Matt Vassar giving chase, and with just a few laps left, Emily Riley and Kevin Vassar tangled off of turn two. The brief pause mattered little to Haskins as he ran away with the truck division victory with Matt Vassar in the second spot. David Murphy in his number 11, we had him on the show last week, jumped him out to the early lead of the Outlaw Late Model feature, but all eyes were on Jason Bates, who was on the charge. On lap number 5, Bates moves around Murphy to take the lead and begins to check out on the field. Lap number 9, Murphy shows, slows suddenly, his night is over, and about the same time, Jimmy Moat spins off of turn 2 and collects Hoyt Stevens. Both drivers are okay, but both are also done for the night. The race will be slowed again when Michael Sylvie spins on the back straightaway. On the restart, Bates takes off. Mike Davidson moves to second with Matthew Rag in third. Bates leads easily the rest of the way and crosses under the finish line first. Bates would congr get congratulations and celebrate in victory lane, but he would not remain the winner. This happens sometimes. His car failed to pass post-race technical inspection, 
giving the win to Davidson in the number 27. That moved Rag to second and Terry Martin to third. Now let's hear from those winners. Me and Spanky Hicks, we had a heck of a race. I hated he uh, got in trouble there. Uh, man, this 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 uh, this race car was just awesome tonight. This is I told him after qualifying or practice, I said, man, this is the best this car has been in a long time. I knew if we could get out front, we could hold it. But there's so many people to thank Calvert Trucking, Generation Enterprises, Pendergrass Tire, Mr. Sprinkler, uh, Ace and the Whole Motorsports, Neighbors Automotive. Uh, if it wasn't for them guys, we wouldn't be here. Great run tonight, great win. Tell me how you did it. I just kind of got a jump on them there to start, and they kind of fell back a little bit. The uh, good cars were kind of a little bit further in the back, and uh, Tom Bryan worked his way up there to 20, I think. This was his first race. He uh, finally got the little groove of it and uh, found out he got a little speed on it, and he started trying to run me down there. My tires kept falling off on me a little bit, so the only chance I had was to try to get him on that jump and hold him down for that one last lap. Yeah, that was a real good run with Jesse. Uh, I hated he, he wrecked up there. We had a, had a really good run going, and uh, we got together a little bit before that, and I don't know if he cut a tire or something, but on that restart, he just drove in, and, and I guess that's when he, when he wrecked. And uh, then under that green, I had a red flag. My battery died on me, so I had to get pushed off, and then... Uh, on that last turn, coming out turn four, the transmission went out, so I'm done. I got to be pushed, so if anybody can call a wrecker. <laughs> Cody, how'd you do it tonight? Yes, sir, we just got uh, kind of conserved our stuff there for a little bit and uh, let them battle it out and then pulled on by them at the end. So, Tell us a little bit about some of the folks that help you get to the racetrack, uh, racing radios and these other folks. Yeah, it's uh, awesome to win on their, uh, their night. They were sponsoring the big pr super late mall race, and uh, I'd like to thank them, Motorola Solutions, Versified Electronics, Robert Mascaro and Associates, PMI, Pro Shocks, and Circle Wheels. Dan, we've got one of your biggest shows of the year coming up. Let's talk about the next event, the NASCAR k and Pro East Series coming to town. I am so excited about this one because Slacks, Slack Auto Parts 150, came back in, sponsored this race again. They're on board with us. And uh, this series has provided probably as much action the first part of the year of any of the series that I've seen in NASCAR and them going to Iowa and Bowman Gray before they come here, I expect that that level of competition won't be any less here. <laughs> yeah. And it's a great, great series for these young kids to come up in. We've got some awesome names, names of sons, grandsons, whatever, coming through this series, up and coming, that are moving on through that, that absolutely make this the greatest series to me right now to be in that I could think of. And one of their biggest names, Darrell Wallace Jr., is about to make his debut in the Nationwide Series. And we've seen Chase Elliott almost win that race with Brett Moffitt back at Richmond. So I know we're all excited for that night. Yeah, we're all excited. And this is a place to come see these up and coming stars because most of these that are up leading the points right now are winning races are your up and coming drivers for whether it be the Truck Series, Nationwide, or Cup. They're moving up, and, and they will be in these other series in the next couple of years. And where do fans need to go to get ticket information and information about the entire schedule of events? RaceGMP.com. Easy go on there, and um, this race is, um, you can also go to Slack Auto Parts and get a discount coupon. They're the only place that you'll be able to do that and get, get $5 off your tickets. Oh, hey. So <laughs> go to Slack's and uh, pick up a discount ticket and tell Henry I said hello. Sounds good. <laughs> sounds Dan, thanks so much for letting us come over here and, and talk about the race. Had a Thank great time over here, and, and we'll see you as we get ready for uh, the K&N series to come to town. That's going to be an exciting series, and I hope to see you there. All right, sounds great. Well, that's going to do it for us for this week, folks, but we're not quite done. We only have about 30 minutes of television time each week, but when we have a little extra to share with you, we're going to start putting it online to view on Garage Talk Extra. That's exactly what we're doing this week. You can go online now to view a special comment portion of our program. Just go to raceweekillustrated.com, click on the link on the front, or you can click on the Garage Talk tab up out on the front. Again, that's raceweekillustrated.com for Garage Talk talk extra. We'll be back with you again one week from now and we'll be talking about more racing activity, some of the re results from the area, and we'll be sitting down with another area racer in our pit road spotlight. Until then, that's Dan Elliott. This is Doug Turnbull. I'm Brandon Reed. This is Raceweek Illustrated Garage Talk, and we'll see you at the races.